Good evening, welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 329, <clears throat> and tonight as our guest, we have Master Lalo Palmeiras from Mexico. He's going to be talking tonight about Dos Paris. He also went to the Philippines, where he had not only learned from Kakoi there, but he also competed, and we got a bit to show on that. He's also going to be doing a demo and everything. So without further ado, I'm going to be bringing him up. If you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button, and we're going to get started. Hey there. Good evening. Thank you for coming on. <clears throat> Hi, Master Dean. How are you? It's really nice to be here yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, actually. I'm so glad we finally made this happen. So, um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. You are so, you know, this is way overdue. And I want to get other folks um, from down there as well. But I figured we'd, we'd start with you first. Um, so, um, yeah, before we jump into the FMA aspect and all that, um, what, I mean, like, what was your beginning martial arts training? Well, I, I began training martial arts when I was 15. Now I am 48. I began training Taekwondo. I am a black belt first grade. Just I stopped training Taekwondo. I, I trained for 10 years, more or less, mm -hmm. and stopped it. And during that time, I began training different martial arts like uh, ninjutsu, uh, kickboxing, uh, Muay Thai, uh, different martial arts. But uh, it was more or less 25 years ago that I began training uh, Filipino martial arts. And well, I fall in love with, with Filipino martial arts. I didn't stop training all the other things. I continue training other things uh, at the same time that Filipino martial arts. I trained, uh, you know, a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, Kyushu Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I continue training uh, different styles, but 25 years ago, ago I uh, fall in love with Filipino martial arts and that's that's what I train. That's what I do, and and I really love it. So, guys, so familiar. I got my second degree in Taekwondo. Oh. Um, I saw the first UFC, and I was going. So I went to go find MMA. But ironically, the MMA gym. I went there seeking MMA, but without realizing I was going to find my true love, which was FMA. Um, yeah. And at that point, I never even heard of it. I, I was just like, and then I saw, it, and then MMA just got. Yeah, <laughs> and JKD. Yeah. Um, but uh, so interesting. So, um, what was your? I guess. What, I mean, what was the first style that you experienced in FMA? So, what was the style, and who was the teacher? Well, uh, I began training Kakoito uh, Separis. That's the style that I have been training for 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 all the time. But I began in a really, I don't know, really funny way because uh, I'm a doctor, I'm a medical doctor, I am a pediatric neurologist, but uh, when I was doing my, my social service in medicine, I, I was training Taekwondo and I wanted to continue training. So I went to a school and in that school they trained Taekwondo and also Ninjutsu. So the, the teacher of, of Ninjutsu once told me, hey, you have here two sticks, let's train with, with two sticks. And I said, what's that? And he only said, sticks. That's the only thing that he said. Sticks. So I began training <laughs> sticks like that. And, and it was just like, OK, let's do it. And you know, in Jiu-Jitsu, there are so many weapons. But I, I fall in love uh, in, in, with, with the sticks. So I finished that time of, of my uh, medicine process. Uh, and then I began trying to, to, to reach, to, to get somebody that, can, that I can train uh, Filipino martial arts. I, I didn't know that it was Filipino martial arts. Then mm -hmm. one day, I, I, and also it is really important, you know, it was a time that, that uh, you don't have internet, you don't have Facebook, you don't have anything of that. Nothing social media, and magazines. Nothing, nothing <laughs> yeah. So I saw one magazine and it said, okay, Filipino martial arts, uh, dead weapons. And I said, okay, that guy has two sticks. Maybe that's the thing that I was looking for. And I get the phone number of, of my teacher on that time. His name uh, is uh, Angel Custigo. And he began training Cacoidos uh, uh, at that time. So I reached him and I began training with him. And that was a really good uh, chance to, to begin training with him. Later on, I uh, met uh, many different uh, teachers of Cacoidos of Separis. 
and I had the chance to to meet uh, Manon Kakoy. Uh, Manon Kakoy at that time uh, came to Mexico every year, every two years. You know, uh, I'm a grandmaster of Mexico, that is Jerry Rechea. He's the only grandmaster here in Mexico. And also Angel Postigo uh, were the ones that host uh, Manon Kakoy, and they they host him every two years, more or less. So I began training with, with going to, to all the seminars. I began training and, and getting involved in, in, in Kakoy Dose Paris. Wow. So, huh, I didn't realize there were guys before you down there and um, and doing that. We got some folks saying hello. And folks, if you're watching us, tell us where you're watching from. We have Ernesto. We have Eduardo. And then we, we got Victor. So if I'm not mistaken, Victor's from... Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic. Dominican Republic. Wow, man, I, man, I remember that. And we, Ernesto and Eduardo from Mexico, right? From Mexico, yeah. Okay, all right, wow. Um, yeah, folks, if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. So um, so what do you think? So um, you, you look up, you find it in the magazine, and you go there. Um, you know what? Um, what did you What did you really like about Dose Paris? Um, I mean, what um, I know it was the first thing you saw in the magazine, but uh, you know uh, what really attracted you to it for you? You know, for you to stay all these years. You know, at that time, I think it was the only option. Uh, mm -hmm. For being clear, here in Mexico, uh, Manon Cacoy uh, and Grandmaster Richard Bustillo. Uh, were the only guys that came to Mexico to 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 there make was the seminars. only two of America. Yeah. The Stillo was the only yeah. one that was going down for a long time. For a long time, later they began to come to Mexico. Many many uh, gurus, masters, and grandmasters of different styles. But I think that the first ones that came to Mexico were uh, Richard Bustillo and once again Jerry Rechea uh, and Angel Postigo uh, host him. And Richard Bustillo uh, also uh, made that that uh, Manon Cacoy came to Mexico. So it was the only the only style that we know, the only style that we had. And um, I mean, at that time, for being sure, I, I didn't know that I I, I didn't know that uh, that there were so many so many Filipino mm, martial arts. I, I didn't that either. Yeah. Train. So I I began training Cacoy dos Pares, and I said, okay, that's it, and that's what I like, and that's what I'm doing. Right now, 25 years ago, uh, I have um, read, I have not trained a lot, but uh, look uh, many videos of different martial arts. And I think that the the most important thing that made me fall in love first was the, I don't know how to say it, but the way that Manon Kakoy uh, goes, guide, and continue with all the, with all the, 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 the family of the Kakoi Kanyeti in the whole world. That was really important for me to continue training with him. And mm -hmm. talking about the style, uh, I think that I fall in love when I uh, look for the first time, when I watch the first time doing the guys sparring with Corto Curvada. Mm -hmm. And it's really mm -hmm. strong range. Yeah, and I said, okay, that's, when I, that's what I want to learn. So that was the moment that I really said, okay, I, I, I want to continue training uh, Kakoi Dose Paris. I think that's the most important time when uh, when I realized, okay, I want to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That I mean, makes sense. I mean, obviously, definitely makes sense. If at that time those are the only two that were coming down to Mexico, it's not like you had a lot of options. I mean, it's not like you were, uh, yes, yes. you know. Um, and you know, fun. at that time, at that time, Richard Bustillo made the seminars uh, doing Cacoido in Paris yeah. and Jet Kundo. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, all the IMB stuff, uh, Jet Kundo, uh, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu Grappling, and Kakoi Dose Paris. So, you have to, to, to train the combo, but uh, of course, I like JKD, I like uh, Muay Thai, I like Jiu Jitsu, but Filipino martial arts at that time, Kakoi Dose Paris was the thing that really made me fall in love. Yeah, so in Connecticut, it was this Anasama blend that was really like what was heavily. Um, and so that's where I started. And then I got Mark Wiley's book. And so, yeah. and then I just started like <clears throat> chasing. <laughs> I just started chasing yeah, files and people. And, uh, but um, yeah, so um, getting just back, you know, you know, Richard Basillo, you know, it was funny. I was supposed to get my black. Um, I just never tested. Like I, I had like five, six years in Dose Paris under uh, 
Richard Bastillo's rep, who's in Connecticut here, Chris Smith. I mean, okay. unfortunately, he passed away, as we all know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I just didn't test. But uh, but yeah, I, I had like five years in it and all that. Um, so when I was seeing you, when we did the seminar together, like I, a lot, I was seeing a lot like that I had forgotten and all that, that you, <laughs> uh, that you were doing incredibly well. Um, oh, thank you. So, but, uh, so we also got, let's go, we got John Mack. Ooh, John. Yeah. Mack. Yeah. Master John Mack was on here. Um, we got, and we got, uh, oh, we got, uh, uh, Master Carlito. All right. And, uh, Victor. Yes. Great question, Victor. I'm definitely going to get that. To, uh, to that question for you. Um, so, um, just to, you know, for the folks who might not know, what is dose hyperion like? Um, it, I mean, you know, I, you know, coming from you, what is it, what does it emphasize? Like, it's pretty much a, a stick system, correct? Yeah, I think so. It's pretty concentrated in stick system more than in other weapons. Uh, we use one stick, double stick. And we use knife. That's the the, the 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 thing that we use mostly. Of course, we have empty hands. And you know, at the beginning, I didn't have that that chance. At the beginning, uh, Manon Kakoi uh, was a judo and jiu-jitsu fighter. So uh, when he set a student in his in, in headquarters, they have to to know to learn judo before training training screamer. Uh, for me, what's the most important thing in in Kakoito Separis, I think that it's once again Corto Curvada. For me, it's the, the essential part, the most important part of mm -hmm. Kakoito Separis, and it's joining with Scrido. Uh, Manon Kakoi, right. Yeah, Manon Kakoi uh, develops Scrido, that is the, the, the way that you make a disarm, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a takedown. And uh, it was like that, they're, 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 that both parts are the most important for me um, because. Well, Manoka Koi said many times, okay, I wanna, I, I will fight with you and you can use a long range, but in a time you will have to, 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 to go to close range. Uh, definitely you have to, to we, we will go to, to, to go close. At some point. We gonna do at that time. Yeah, of course. So at that time, uh, he used Judo and Jiu Jitsu to make the takedowns and also the Corto Curvada to uh, continue st uh, sticking and striking the other guy and have the chance to use the whole uh, stick, all the parts of the stick, so you can be able to 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 hit and, and control the other the other guy. I, for me, that's the essential part of of uh, Kakoi Dose Paris. You know, there are so many guys that train uh, Dose Paris, but they don't have the the corto curvada uh, in, in a really good way. So. I think that they're losing the most important part. I don't know all, all about Corto Curvada. I'm a beginner in Corto Curvada, but I think that that's my, that's my point that I want to reach someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you're saying the two essential pieces they should really grasp and get is Corto Curvada, the application thereof, and how to apply it. And of course, this credo, you know, yeah. when you're in the clinch, for all and, and all that um no that totally makes sense um i remember when i was training it i remember getting the empty hands you know like off three beach you know and all that I was, you know outside sectoring outside sectoring um the knife we didn't do a lot of um because don quest are you familiar with don cuesta no don cuesta is in no. new jersey he was uh, under them but uh so he was coming to new connecticut but uh um but yeah, so we got, let me just see. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. I guess I still got to get to Victor's. Oh. Okay, you know, we get, let's tackle this one. Then we can get, we'll get the Victor's. This one is kind of, and right now we're, okay. So the question for Eduardo uh, is how, how can FMA help you to improve, to train other martial arts like Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai? I understand those pairs has a Scrito and Panatukin, which is correct. So I guess this question is, how how did FMA help you in, in your other arts of training? Well, I think that Filipino martial arts gives you the chance to develop both, both sides of your body and both sides of your, of your brain, because you have to use right and left, and you have to be 
the same good with in both in both uh, in both areas. So I think it's really important to do that. Uh, my point of view is that uh, fighting Filipino martial arts make you have uh, to, to be really alert, to have a really good reflex, to be really in good shape so it's really important that that you prepare uh, for if you are if you are training like a, a competitor like a scream model so i think that's something really important and i also think that it it changed your point of view uh, there are so many guys you, you know that there are so many guys that train filipino martial arts that have never been hit with a stick no or only use a padded stick mm. so when you when you are hitting with a with a stick, you know what is pain, what what it really hurts, and I think that you say, okay, if I'm able to 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 support uh, that hit, I'm able to to continue training other martial arts because they will hit me, they will kick me, and and I think I think it's really uh, that's the, the important thing that can help you to to continue developing other other martial arts. No, well said. I agree, especially the bilateral. I mean, your left, right. Yeah. You know, um, I mean that's that. You know, just the double weapons alone does that. Crossing midline. You know, just um, you know, they're doing studies that it's it's enhancing people with Alzheimer's. So I mean, yeah, got to be a benefit there, right? I mean, or, or Parkinson, for example. There, there is a master in from LA, Master Lee. Uh, he's a, a old guy. Uh, I know that he was a Navy SEAL, that he has Parkinson. And it's amazing because you are talking with him and he's doing the, this stream of, with, of, with, with his hand. But when yeah. he had the stick, he will fight and really do it in an amazing way. So it's, I think it's a really, really good uh, Oh, for sure. No, I, I, I for, for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're doing studies on it. They're you know they're they're finding yeah. out just you know and uh, all that just with simple simple lolly drills. They're fine. Yeah, know, of course. Out. Um, so, yeah, well said. Uh, I do want to get to Victor's question. So, uh, oh, well, just something else. For example, Grandmaster John Mag that is here. He's planning that next year we will have for the first time in the tournament and screw the tournament. You know, hitting and also make the takedown. So, so it's the first time that we will do it, and it's really nice because, uh, well, he's uh, trying to to enhance the most important or one of the most important parts of Kakoi Kanyete Dose Paris style, and uh, doing a squid in our tournament will be really, really nice. Will be really dangerous <laughs> because you know not everybody will fall in a good way. But yeah. I think it's, it will be nice to to see what are we gonna do. On, on the next tournament, tournament uh, with with that stuff that Grandmaster John Mack is trying to to, to develop. That'd be fantastic. I mean, matter of fact, they're doing. We had a guest on. I think it was about. When, um, I think like it was about like a year ago or so, and uh, the whole Huego Toro Toro. Um, they're starting to do over there, which is they're they're in all the gear, but they're. Yeah. I mean, they're doing the takedowns and the, and the whole nine yards. So I mean, it's it sounds like what he's. Uh, planning is uh, you know very familiar um but we got uh okay let me get back to victor's i just so i i just don't want to miss uh victor's question here okay so victor's question is in your experience what is the secret for the better escrimador oh my god well i think there are two different uh, point of view if you are a screamador for competition or you are a screamador for i mean for life for self-defense and that stuff for being a good screamador in competition you have you need a lot of stamina you need to be very very disciplined you have to to be you know if you are competing in uh, for example week of uh, or in a world championship, you have to be really uh, an athlete. You have to be really good in, in, in that stuff. For me, uh, in that point of view, one of the most important things in my physical train was uh, jogging, jogging a lot. Oh, jog, okay. And, and also hitting the tire. That the was tires. really important. The tire, hit and hit and hit and hit and hit. That's really important. Uh, I also uh, did meditation and it was good for me. But talking about life, I think that for being a good screamador, uh, you know, 
it makes really good that you are always alert, that you usually are thinking in different weapons like this one or mm -hmm. whatever you have just close to you. And I think that that's the, the, the important thing that I think that you are good screamer when you are doing a scream a whole day, when you are, for example, you know, I am the hospital uh, and, and I'm doing, for example, this. No, well, I was at the hospital and I was doing this, you know, and I was doing, doing this, no, and I was doing this, and people were saying, what are you doing? Oh, don't worry. Okay, let's continue with, with, <laughs> with the medical. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I was doing this, you know, no, and, and just, well, the guys that, that know me, they say, okay, okay, you're training. Yeah, I'm training. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think that's when, when you are a complete time, a full time screamador, I think that, that, that that's, the, that's when, when you are really doing it in the correct way. Yeah, right. All right. And let me just, okay, so we got the victors. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any others and before we get on. Um, okay, so we got another one from, Arne uh, from Ernesto. And he is, what's the, um, how do you look at the current situation of the FMA status in Mexico? Oh, my God. Well, you know, um, as I was uh, telling you, Master Dean, uh, at the first at the first times, uh, only Manon Cacoy and Richard Bustillo were the guys that came to Mexico. Later, so many guys from different styles began to, uh, coming to Mexico, and I think that it was a really bad time because uh, many uh, many instructors, many gurus, many many grandmasters said, "Okay, you will be, you will have the representation of this style if you host me. I don't know every year, every two years, or something like that." So suddenly, there were so many guys that didn't know anything about Filipino martial arts, and they were just masters or grandmasters, but they uh, don't really have an idea about, about Filipino martial arts. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking about what we are doing about Kakoi Cañete Doce Pares, uh, I think that right now we are in a part that we are improving. We are learning uh, really close with, uh, with Grandmaster uh, Choc Cañete, that you know he's uh, the, the, the grandson of, of Manon Kakoi. And we are also we are also training with uh, I, I mean for me my mentors are uh, senior grandmaster Ron Liu that lives in San Jose California and uh, senior grandmaster Anthony Kliman. So we are training really close with them, and uh, that's the way that we are improving. And right now I think that the the thing in Mexico is that we are. Um, we are developing. We are not stunned. We are not. We we did. We haven't stopped training during, during this pandemic. So I think that we are a group that are uh, growing and that we are expanding. Not only in Mexico, but only to Latin America, like you have seen. So the future in Mexico, I think that it's really good because we are together. We are joining together. We are training. We are training hard. And well, there are guys that that have done so many things. Uh, for example, of, I hope uh, next year I can go to, to compete again to Philippines, to Cebu City. So uh, we have good plans for the for the future. Of course, there are guys that will say that uh, they know everything about Filipino martial arts, about Kakoido Separis. But if they are not training uh, right now, if they are not uh, improving, if they are not trying to to continue uh, in in a, in a continue um, instruction or they think that they know everything, well, they are not the guys that are really, that, that are really uh, apporting or giving something good for, for the style. Yeah, I just don't, um, I don't say how anybody can say that, like, you know, they know they have everything, you know, yeah. <laughs> just, man, it's amazing. When, yeah. yeah, when you hear that. You know, Manon Kakoy always said, the only continuous in a screamer is change. Yeah. So with that, you always have to continue yeah. improving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, refinement, it's endless. I mean, you can yeah. refine until you're in your 90s. I mean, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just endless. I don't, yeah, when I hear stuff like that, I I just go the other way. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. That's what we're doing in Mexico. Go the other way. When we, when we go in front of that, guys, we say, okay, thank you very much. We will continue. Yeah, on. right, right. Just, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous, right? That, you know, but um, wow. Um, so, uh, with, with respects to the empty hands, like, is it pretty much 
um, is there an influence of Western boxing in their empty hands, or is it, or is it a fusion of Western boxing with a Filipino flavor? If that makes sense. Mm, I think it's a mix. You know, I, mean, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I think it's a mix. You know, uh, I, I think that in in Kakoido Paris, mostly the the empty hands comes from from Sinawali. Uh, you know, for example, just something like this. Mm. You know, what, for uh, for example, block, hit, block, hit, and try to not not always being uh, with the fist. Uh, many times you are with with empty with uh, with the hands uh, open, and you use fingers and you use you use elbows and right. so many all, all the parts. So I think it's important that you can adapt what you are doing in with one stick or, or two sticks and translate it to, to, to empty hands. You no, know? for example, once again, one, two, three it could be one, two, and, and go with the with the elbow, for example, or something like that. Not not exactly coming from from Western boxing. Um I don't know, that's my point of view about uh, about empty hands. Of course, I'll always prefer to not to be in empty hands. I, I'm an, a really small guy. Uh, so if you tell me, if, if, if you ask me, okay, what would you do? I always will try to, to, to bring a, a weapon with me, to bring something to, to protect uh, myself. Uh, you know, there are many parts in USA that you can have a, a gun with yourself and you can walk in the street with a, with, with a gun. In Mexico, you cannot do that. It's also, you cannot also have a, a knife, for example. But you have, uh, just uh, for saying it in a, in a way, you can have a dulo dulo, you can have a palm stick, yeah, you can yeah. have uh, something like that. And for me, it's better to, to, to have that yeah. instead of because just being in, in empty hands. But, um, so when um, you're saying the laws, um, so the law, I mean, so no guns, but the, so the laws are pretty strict on knives too? Yeah. Yeah, you cannot have a, a knife. Well, many guys carry a knife. Yeah, I mean, right, it's right, not, right. They they just right, yeah, but it's illegal it. to, to, yeah. to 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 have to 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 carry one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. I didn't. And it's not like good that, that I'm a doctor and I have it in my in my uh, white suit yeah. suit uh, having a knife with me. You know, but yeah. well, usually I, I I have one with my <laughs> with with myself. You could just say it's your scalpel. Yeah, <laughs> that, that could be an option, of course. You know, I mean, gosh, that's funny. Um, so within, um, let's just, I guess for the folks who are watching, let's, I mean, let's hear about the man himself, uh, you know, Jam Kakoi. So, I mean, what could you tell us about him, you know? Well, I, I know that I'm not the closest student of, of Manon Kakoi. There are so many guys that really met him. In, in a really in a really close way, but I think I had uh, good memories with Manon Kakoi. Uh, there is one that I really like. Uh, when he was ninety years old, uh, they made uh, they host him in Los Angeles. You know Mark Parra. Do, do you know Mark Parra? He's Mark. a mass Mark Parra. He's in Los Angeles, and he has a school that it's named uh, House of Champions. Okay. Well, so they're in House of Champions. They made an amazing seminar, and many grandmasters and masters from USA came came uh, went there. So I, I went to, to, to the seminar, and you know uh, I was just driving, and I rent a car with with other guys that I went, and I was just uh, driving and, and get to the to the parking of the of the area where is the the gym, and at that time Manonka Koi was uh, getting out of another car. I don't know who was driving with him, but Manon Kakoi was getting out and he has to, to walk to the gym and he has carry his his bag and he was uh, 90 years old. So I just uh, park just in a hurry, go out this, the, the car and go to Manon Kakoi and get uh, close to Manon Kakoi and I said, Manon Kakoi, how are you? Let me carry your bag, blah, blah, blah. And he just remembered me and he said, maybe there were I don't know, maybe three years, two years that, that we have trained together. And he said, hey, Lalo, you're Lalo from Mexico. You're the doctor. How are you? And he gave me a hug. And, uh, you know, he he, uh, he he grabbed my my arm 
and we walk together to, uh, to all the park and get into the into the school. Oh, that is nice. There in the school, there were all all the grandmasters and masters, and everybody were like, "Who is the guy that is, that is coming with with uh, with Man on the Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, it was the first time that I that I went to 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 USA to train. So Manuka Koi was like, hey, he's Lalo from Mexico. He's my, my student and he's a doctor and he's training. And I'm really happy that he's that he's hearing it with us because he came from Mexico and blah blah blah. We were the only guys that went from, from another country. Well, there was there was another guy from, from Germany and um and Grandmaster Tobias. And uh, so it was really nice because um, Manuka Koi always remembers you. He always have a joke for you. He has really an amazing memory. And I can tell you, for example, he knows, uh, he, he met my wife when we were, when she was my girlfriend and we, she always remembered her, for example, no? So okay. he was a, a guy that, 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 that really had a good memory, that really had a joke all, all the time. So for me, that was really, that, that part is one of the, of the ones that I remember a lot. Another one was being there in Cebu in 2014 uh, we train all together, grandmasters, masters, so many students with, with training headquarters. And suddenly they said, okay, time to go out. Uh, Manon Kako has to eat. Uh, well, please leave, leave the school. So we all leave the school and Kitty Cañete, uh, uh, well, the only guys that will stay at the school were the, the grandmasters, you know, uh, Anthony Klima, Ron Liu, Grandmaster Don Mack, all, all the, 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 the grandmasters and masters. Uh, at that time, I, I was a master, but, uh, you know, I just grabbed my my sticks, yeah, right. my, my bag, and said, okay, let's go. And uh, Kitty Cañete, uh, she, she was the, the daughter of, of Manon Kakoy. Uh, she said, no, 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 Lalo, uh, my father wants you to, to, to join with us to have dinner to, uh, we all together and they invite me to 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 have dinner with with all of them so i, I was really like like ashamed because there were all the big guys in in Kakoi, yeah, yeah. of Kakoi Kanyete and me no so yeah, yeah. it was re really nice but i i really enjoyed that and, and manon Kakoi said okay lalo you have to 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 stay here with us you are part of this family well you actually saw something in you i mean you know i mean definitely you know what i mean whether it was your personality you're worth that big or you know so we obviously saw great things in you you know um so but uh so when um so did you get to i guess during when you know when he was alive did you get to play around with him yeah yeah i, I had the chance to 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 play with him when we when he came to mexico i had to chance to cross the sticks and i do it this way because you cannot cross the sticks with with Manon Kakoi. He will hit you all the time. He will, well, you will flow with him. Just pack, 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 and hit and be hitting and be hitting. So I cannot say that I uh, cross the stick with him. He played with me. That's what he do. That that's the only thing. <laughs> I was there. But I was... <laughs> yeah, I was there. I was there. Yeah, I was there. That that's the only thing. But yeah, I had that chance. And like you said, I was there. That's, That's only funny. funny. I just somebody they're in their eighties and they're just like smacking you around and you're just yeah. I would just go in the corner and just start crying. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that you can do. Yeah, that's the only thing. So I was there, like you said. I'm just be like, I just got beat up by an eight year old man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just being... yeah, it's you know, for me, Manon Kakoi was like Yoda. He he was for me. He he was my Yoda and. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was really small. Uh, he was old man. He was uh, like really, really slow. He he cannot walk really, really fast. From but when he has his the stick in his hand, he will pa 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 do it in an amazing way. And well, for me, Manon Kakoi was Yoda. I had in my, I have in my uniform. I had a patch of Yoda with the uniform of Kakoi Dose Paris. And and once I I. I I show show him the the patch and he said okay and I said okay it's, it's because for me you are you are Master Yoda yeah and he just laughed and said okay I love your patch now I'm, the guys oh. of, of my school have have that patch in oh um, that's funny yeah wow and then we got we just make sure okay uh, Ernesto has a question at this moment you're one of the guys that really know a complete FMA style in Mexico ah good question. 
How, uh, how do you feel about this? <laughs> I will hit Ernesto someday soon. Soon I will hit him about that question. You know, uh, well, of course, uh, nobody knows a complete Filipino martial arts here in Mexico. But in my point of view, uh, I think that one of the guys that have uh, a really good knowledge about Filipino martial arts is uh, Grandmaster Jerry Rechea from Cacoido Separis. He, I, I think he's really a good a good screamador, a good fighter. Uh, he knows a lot of many different styles. I think he's really good. Uh, there was another guy, but he passed away maybe five, six years ago. That was Alejandro Garduño. And, well, I think that that's all. So, really, so when you look at, I guess my, okay, so my question off his question would be, far as certified people that can teach down there, Regardless okay. of FMA, is it, are they plentiful or only a few? No, no, no. There are so many guys that have. Oh, there, oh, so, oh okay. So just outside of, outside of Dorset like Paris, then there are. Yeah, outside of Dorset Paris, there are so many guys that have certificates and say that they can train. But I think that most of them just have gone to one or two seminars uh, and have host a, 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 a teacher once or twice. And they got a paper and said, okay, I'm, a, I'm an instructor. But I think that there are so many guys here in Mexico that have really been, uh, you know, training hand to hand uh, with, with, a, with a teacher right now. Uh, in my case, for example, I, I don't know, just talking about this pandemic, during the last three years, uh, mm -hmm. most of the guys stopped, stopped training. Uh, in, in talking about our group, not only me, talking about our group, we, we, I think that we have a good opportunity, a good chance with the pandemic because we began training with so many guys like you, for example, yeah. uh, like uh, Guru Roger. We made so many seminars with Chuck Cañete. We had seminar with, uh, with Grandmaster Anthony Kleeman. Uh, for example, as I told you, my mentor is uh, Grandmaster Ron Liu. He didn't accept to train by Zoom. He's an old man. And he said, no, I cannot do it by Zoom. But I continue talking and I continue learning from him. And I think that that's the way that you have to continue doing. I, I, yeah, like, you do like, what you gotta do. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you cannot stop. You cannot stop uh, in Philippines. I, I didn't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, again, going to the question of of um, from from Ernesto, who really know a complete Filipino martial arts style. I don't know. There are. I think there are no more than five guys in Mexico that I know that know a complete a, a complete uh, Filipino martial arts. Uh, hope I, I hope I can be considered one of those. Oh, I'm sure you are. I mean, uh, of course, I, I, I continue saying that I'm a beginner uh, and I want to, to improve more. No, I, I, I'm I'm doing and developing and, and continue improving. Yeah. So, well, someday I will say that that I'm good on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so so how about I'm just curious because I know there was a Lameco guy down there. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. he passed away a few years ago. Um, yeah, he's Alejandro Garduño. That was him. Oh, okay, because yeah. he also was under, because I'm under AMOC, under Tom Sotis, and I think yeah, he, he trained AMOC too. Yeah, you know, he trained, uh, he, he, well, talking about Filipino martial arts, he trained uh, Cacoido Separis at the beginning, and here Eduardo Herrera was he was his friend, and they were close. They were, I think, he was not his student. They were friends, and they were just together. He also trained uh, Lameco with Dave Gold. David uh, Gold. He was, was... Yeah, he was the one that 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 host him for the first time. He was the one that host uh, Guru Roger Bulos uh, for the first time in Mexico, and that's how I. Uh, arrived to 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 La Meco Astic, and I that's the way that I met uh, Guru Roger Bulos by by Alejandro Garduño. Yeah, he passed away maybe five years ago, and he was I really. and he also trained a mock, and, and he was really uh, complete Filipino martial oh, yeah, arts. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Really, he was um, really. he was he was definitely part of a mock. I mean, there's there's there, there's not that many trainers of us. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're kind of small. Um, Wow, that's that. Uh, we got a question. Uh, let me see here. Okay, what's your um, what is your opinion about other FMA styles like Lameco, Ilustrissimo, Piquita Terja, or other combative arts like Piper or the 
Chalet, the Irish stick fighting. Oh, that's well, Eduardo. <laughs> yeah, he's asking a lot. <laughs> well, we have know, to shut the world down. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I give him, I give him some some money to to make the questions. <laughs> That's why he's asking. Also, also, Nestor. You can tell us how much know, after a award. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that all the all the Filipino martial arts are good. They are mm. all the same, but at the same part, all different. You know, everybody thinks that it's just a stick or a knife. But I think that all the styles are are really, really, really good, and there are so many things that you can learn to to different styles. Of course, you will fall in love for one style. Yeah, but I think that resonate really, with you. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's really good that you can have a, a the, the chance to give yourself the chance to to approach and and at least go to one seminar or or read or watch video. Or I don't know so many things to, to to get involved in in different martial arts. For example, for me, my passion is Kakoido Separis. But right now, I'm training Lameco Asti with Guru Roger, and I think it's really amazing because you can improve so many things. And I don't see that there are like enemies or there are that or okay, you are doing Lameco or you are doing I don't know with the uh, right. yeah. yeah, whatever. I think that you can feed all all feed for yourself and uh, improve what you are doing and i think that it's not bad uh, at the end in my case i will continue doing kakoido separates and i will continue doing la mecoastic and i don't have to mix them when i'm uh, teaching them but at the at the same time at the end i think that they will get a mix inside of me and i will try to get the most important things of both uh, filipino martial arts and and trying to yeah. improve myself, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's what I think. Uh, like he said, for example, he's, uh, he's writing there the, uh, about Piper. I know that that my knife had improved in the night in the last, I don't know, two months, three months, mm -hmm. uh, when I began training with you, Piper, and, and that's really important for me. Yeah, yeah, right. No, well said. And we got a question from Anna What is the most difficult thing that you had to face in the learning of FMA? I think that it's that you have to give yourself the chance to uh, to to empty your 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 bagage, your your cup, and say, okay, I'm here to learn, mm -hmm. and I'm a beginner, and and well, be open to, to to learn for 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 everybody. I think that that's the most difficult thing that yeah. you have to do for example it's really nice i think it's like a little bit like jiu-jitsu grappling uh, training with training with uh, grandmaster ron liu uh, training corto curvada he uh, taught us you have to be prepared to lose you have to be prepared that i will hit you mm -hmm. you will have to be prepared to get about all your um, uh, how to say it? Sorry, all your ego, leave your ego mm -hmm. go, uh, uh, go, and and be be a little bit humble and try to 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 improve. It's like you did. So you cannot go to a jujitsu gym and say, okay, I'm, I'm a grandmaster on this and let's fight because they will kick your ass in an amazing way and it will be kicked by a blue belt, you know, and. I think that that's that's the 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 most difficult thing that people have to accept to leave the ego ago and have to 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 know that that you are there not to compete you are there to learn uh, i have had uh, black belts that have been training with me until they get the the, the black belt and uh, when they began training corto curvada with me they said uh, and you hit them in a really bad way. They, they they didn't accept that. They said, "Okay, you are hitting me, and uh, I'm a black belt. So why are you hitting me that way?" And and they just stopped training because I think their ego is ego, so absolutely yeah, yeah. huge. And they said, "Okay, I cannot accept that." And in my case, that I'm a small guy, it's really funny because when a, a big guy goes to the school. They said, "Okay, you are the teacher. This little guy will 
teach me something about self-defense. And when I began, you know, doing all the stuff, they said, okay, oh my God, uh, this this little guy is able to really kick my ass. So it's really, really nice. And, and they have to leave the ego, again, uh, uh, the, the ego away. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know I, I've seen that just with FMA discussion over the years. I've seen it in the group. It's just, you know, you know those who leave it and you know those who can't detach from it. And what they end up doing is they end up lying to themselves and to their students. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. So it's uh, it, it, it keeps going. You know what I mean? The, the lies, you know, it's, uh, you know, as opposed to, hey, man, you guys, I got beat today. And I want to show you this stuff. Now, in my opinion, the students would appreciate that more, the honesty, as opposed to, you know, oh, no, I, I was just having a bad day. You know, you just, you, yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's just, but it's, yeah. it happens. It happens. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So, all right. You went to the Philippines not to train and compete. So I'm going to show folks this video. Uh, <laughs> I love this that. Is, this is pretty good. Yeah, good right. members. So I think what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna well for all right, all right, folks, check this out. So uh, there we go. I should be uh, playing here. Play. Why is that not playing? Play, play. There we go. All right. Tell you what, I'm gonna lower. So that was uh I enjoyed watching that. You know what it reminded me? My favorite boxer was Julio Cesar Chavez, just because he was relentless pressure. He just he's just gonna get you on the ropes and he's gonna tear up your midsection. And then by the tenth round, you're gonna feel all that and you're probably gonna just gonna drop out and all that, which is what he did for two de decades. So when I it just reminded you just like pressure, you're just chasing that guy around and just you could just feel who was controlling the ring the ring generalship and all that so what were you in that moment of time like uh what were you what, what was your thought you know i don't know well you know it was in 2014 uh, for the first time that i went to philippines it was 2012 and i, I that was my first uh, world champion and i didn't won I, I get in fourth place and that's all what i what i get I get so many things, not not a medal. I get the 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 grade of master, and well, it was an amazing, an amazing, an amazing oh, uh, yeah, sure. chance that that really changed my my life. Then two years later, in 2014, I went again and I won two, uh, two gold medals. And in culata, in that style, I got bronze. That was the the the, the fight. If I won that fight, I will go for the first play, to, to fight the final or go to play to fight the, for the third place. So I lose that fight with with Vince Palumbo, with Mas, Grandmaster Vince Palumbo. They they gave the fight to to to. You lost to that fight. Was that weak half and peak half? There we go. Because this is why I'm saying this. Uh, I wouldn't know this had I not had a couple shows that when Nick Merchant came back, he won the gold over there. Um, he was he was 
he came from WeCalf. He was entering with the American team and a, a few other guys. Um, and but through that episode, it kind of came out about the PCAF, some of the judges, some of the calls, some of the refing. Because there's no way I'm looking at that fight that you lost that fight. I mean, unless I need my vision completely checked, and I don't know. But well, there, there were so many things. There were so many things. Vince Palumbo, it's really famous in Kakoido Separis. He had been world champion for so many times. Uh, I was nobody. Uh, and uh, when we fight, uh, we, he, for example, he grabbed my, my helmet and pulled me uh, and pushed me. And there were some things like that. But You're at the end, they that, said, correct? Sorry? You can't do that, correct? You cannot, you cannot do that. Right. Uh, 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 at the end, they say we will tie, so we go to another round and well at the end they said that he he won uh, but it was really you you know it was a good experience uh, because Vince Palumbo is one of my idols uh, he was one of the of the guys that I say okay I want to fight with him I want to learn from him yeah, and when yeah. we, we go to the to the you know in, in the tournament to the line and they told me okay you will fight against Vince Palumbo I think at that time I was Afraid, I was scared, but at the same time, I said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna win him. I'm gonna win him." So it was a really amazing uh, fight. I really like it. I have watched that fight so many times. In my corner was Grandmaster Jerry Rechea, and he was really supporting me. And you know, uh, the most important thing at the end of the of the fight, when we when they said that that Vince Palumbo won, he came with me. And he said, "Hey, you won the fight. You you oh, won that oh, fight." Oh, was he honest? Okay. So right. that was that was really, really, really oh, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. he he came he came with me and he said, "Hey, Lalo, you you won that fight. The judges were wrong. Uh, you won that fight. You should uh, fight for the for the first place." Uh, and well, at the end, of course, I I, I didn't do that. But I I, uh, I fought for the for the third place, and I was you know like a little bit frustrated, a little bit angry, a little bit like okay, I have to show why I'm here. And I fight against an Indonesia guy that was taller and and uh, bigger than me, and I really like that that fight. I, I fight with a lot of stamina, and, and I really I, I won him, and I got that that uh, bronze medal. But it was like. Uh, a really good, a really good fight. I really like it. I, I love that tournament because it was the first time that I won. No, no, yeah. no. Well, I mean, that, that was good. I mean, at least he admitted to you that you won, and I mean that that's okay. I mean, yeah. No respect to him. You know, so we just want yeah, to make of course. Sure, yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not. Missing I'm, and we are really good friends. I, I really. And I'm, I'm sure really... he's not. I'm sure he's a good guy. It was just a judge. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean, yeah. I mean, of you course. know. Um. Yeah, I'm sure no reflection on Vince. You know. Um, let's make sure I'm not Royce Ramos, my man in New York. This is a great interview. This is a great interview. Great to Thank hear more know. about the other styles. We will, we're getting to that Piper stuff. Um, then we got Serna. Wonderful opportunity watching two wonderful FMA masters talking about very important subjects in this way. Greetings and best wishes for both. Uh, nice night, nice week. We'll continue learning and advancing dreams from Colombia. Oh, that was that was very nice. Um, yeah. Sarna. Thanks a lot. Yeah, very nice. Excellent work. A lot of strength and stamina. Yeah. And uh, doo -doo -doo, let me see here. Let me see what Mr. Uh, Latin America. Okay, that you're representing the system there in Latin America. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any. Um, any questions? Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, um, all right, I played that. I'm sorry. I'm just making sure I didn't pass over anything. So when did you, okay, so when did you officially start teaching it? Like, um, like, you know, like, how many years in did you start teaching? 2006. 2006. Oh, all right, all right, okay. 2006, I began opening my backyard school just with one or two guys. Uh, going to a park I've been, and began training and training and training and training. Uh, my school is not a school for earning money, 
there were guys at, at the beginning I didn't I didn't charge any, anything about uh, anything for 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 train later I know that I had to do to do something to, to, to get a little of money right now it's it's really a, a, a low amount that 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 I charge and well that was the way that I began training and getting a, a group I can always think that it's better to have 10 12 50 uh, 15 students instead of big school just yeah. few students not something big and it's better because you can pay attention of, of your students and well right now um, I don't know suddenly uh, Saul from Costa Rica began sending messages to me and saying I'm going to train with you then Victor from Dominican Republic began and uh, sent a message and says and said I want to train with you and suddenly just like boom we began training with different countries in Guatemala, Ecuador, Argentina, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, and with different parts of Mexico. And well, it's really not Colombia, and it's really nice because we are spreading Manon Cacoy's style, and we are trying to do our best in, in you know, in, 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 in the Filipino martial arts uh, here in Mexico and, and Latin America. So I began giving classes in 2006. I don't know how many years here are. They say it's 15 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, more or less. And well, here we are training and I uh, hope I can continue doing for a long time. So, no, that's fantastic. Did you have to be a certain, like, is there a certain level that they require you before you begin teaching it or? At that time, I think I was like a fourth grade black belt fourth grade something like that you are able to teach uh, since you are second grade black belt second grade that was what they used to do that and right now uh, they said that if you are uh, from brown belt you can you can open a club and begin uh, training with, with with another guys to trying to to develop what you are doing because there are there are not so many uh, teachers in 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 all in all the in, in a part, you know, for example, in USA, there are so many instructors of Filipino martial arts, but there are countries that there are nobody. For example, in, in Dominican Republic, Victor is the only one that is uh, learning. Yeah, right. She's the only one, huh? Wow. The only one, the only one in, in whole Dominican Republic. So mm -hmm. it's really important. And also something bad is that there are so many guys that, for example, are from other styles, karate, taekwondo, mm -hmm. whatever. And as, I, as we had uh, said, they took uh, they assist to two or three seminars and they began uh, teaching filipino martial arts but they, they don't have the background they don't have the knowledge about the the, the filipino martial arts okay so uh, so now so not only do you teach but you you're kind of heading the i mean you're, you're kind of heading the sanction aren't you i mean in mexico with, and, and as well as the other countries where you just mentioned right yeah wow yeah I think well, I think that I am the the, the one that are that, that it's trying to 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 spread the system from Mexico go down and and well we're doing it. Man. Yeah. yeah, it has been it has been a little bit difficult, but you know for us the pandemic was the the way that we can reach the, or, or have that opportunity for us. Zoom has been an amazing uh, tool, so we are we are training that way. That's great. I mean, no, I mean, that's, wow. I mean, it sounds like you're, I mean, you're doing a great job. I mean, just the fact that the countries you you got and you're getting and you have, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, now, are, do you also, I mean, I know just from when I did the Piper seminars, some folks from those different countries came and all that. Do you actually yeah. go to those countries or is it, or for right now, is it more kind of online with you training them? You know, it's something amazing. I have been training with Victor for four years, and I haven't met him. Isn't that amazing? Like, I know there's like so many people I've been training with, and they're like, they we've actually become like really good friends. But there might be, you know, you know, how many thousands, you know, hundreds of miles away, or or, uh, <clears throat> or whatever. You know what I mean? But now that the pandemic hopefully is over, I think hopefully things yeah. will, uh, you know, will start to open. Yeah. Up, you know? I hope sooner or later I will go to those countries or they will come to Mexico. For example, you know, Guru Roger will come to Mexico in yeah. November and Victor will come will come to that seminar. I hope that also 
Luis from Colombia will come uh, and and well we have time we, we will we will join sooner or later I, yeah, I know definitely, that. definitely definitely yeah. I gotta get down there too I just gotta get my passport uh, <laughs> yeah but uh you, you, you I hope you come you can come to Mexico one we will host you so is the someday oh yeah 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 that'd be, that'd be wonderful yeah okay so let me just see here do, 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 if i'm not missing any questions and okay all right so uh all right um do you want to do the demo whatever you got let me move a little bit from another yeah yeah another. matter of fact that's no that's fine and i'll of course i'll lower myself too so yep. so when you do it you'll have the full screen so Well, just two moves or three moves. Yeah, all right, here, let me, um, I'll lower myself, just so you, you can have the uh, full screen. Mm. Well, okay, I really like this exercise, you know, because Kitty uh, Cañete uh, showed this exercise uh, many years ago, I think it was 2012, and it was really nice because we were all together at headquarters. Uh, Grandmaster Anthony Kleeman, Grandmaster John Mack uh, were giving the class, and suddenly Kanyete arrived to the to the to the gym, and she said, "Okay, I want to show you an exercise that I used uh, when I was a girl, and, I, and we used to warm up. But I think it's a, a nice uh, exercise." And she began doing the the this exercise, and, and I really like it. Uh, I, I show it in the seminar that we have together uh, with Master Dean, but I will do it again, and, and I like it a lot. So if there are 12, 12 uh, hits, like many things that we do in Dose Paris, they go to 12 uh, numbers, and it's like number one, and then hitting with a, with, with a redonda to the, to the hand of the other guy. Then a number two line, and hitting with another redonda to the other guy. So it's one, two, three, and four. And after that, you do uppercuts, five, six, seven, and eight. The uppercuts go to the chin. And then you go an horizontal uh, hit that goes, goes to the ribs or to the belly. And then you go with a weight tick. When you do the weight tick, you go back and do it this weight tick, a, a, a number two line, and get to the on guard position. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I think it's a really nice way that you can combine different. Uh, different patterns of, of striking. And well, I, it's a, an exercise that I like a lot. And I will just show an, another exercise that they call uh, a salt set. And it's, this one, it begins, I think it, it joins it joins different uh, strikes and it's also really nice. You begin with Lico, one, two, three, and four. You go to the temple, to the right temple, then go to the, uh, to, to the face or to the, uh, collarbone on the other side, then again, uh, left temple and the collarbone of the other side, of the other side, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Then you go with liso, liso, or, uh, uh, or abanico, five, six, and then you will go with an X slash seven, eight. Then you use uppercut, nine, 10, and you do two horizontal hits that is like a little C, one, and to go into the head and go to the belly or to the hip. So in a complete way is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We use it in Corto Curvada, this, this uh, way to striking, and it's really, really good to do it in, in that way.
So that's what I had for to, to, to show Master Dean. Thank you very much. Sure, awesome. So I, yeah, I remember the count from the seminar we did. Um, so I, I remember, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. With um, okay. So you train. So you train other styles in FMA. Was it pre predominantly thus far Lameco? Is that the uh, the other system? Yeah, just Cacoido Separis and Lameco are the only two styles that I have trained in a more deep way. I have gone to different seminars, but I think that Lameco and Cacoido Separis are the styles that I have been training for for a long time. Well. Lameco not for a long time, just during pandemic, during three years, for, uh, yeah. more or less. And, and that's the only two, two styles that I have been training. So when David Gould was going to Mexico, did you ever check his seminar out? No, no, yeah. I didn't went. I didn't went to those seminars. I My first approach to Lameco was when Guru Roger came right. to Mexico. Right. It was 10 years ago. And he came to also again uh, Alejandro Garduño uh, host him, yeah. and we had that. It was not really a seminar, you know. We were four guys there in in at Veracruz. Eduardo Herrera was one of the guys that were there, and it was more or less like a gathering with friends and just Guru Roger hit us, and that's it. Just just like that. <laughs> he, so went, he came down, he hit us, and he left. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it was really, really an amazing way uh, to 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 meet uh, Guru Roger. Mm. And uh, I, I, my plan was at that time to continue mm -hmm. training with him, but you know there were so many things, and Guru Roger wasn't able to come to Mexico again. Uh, Alejandro Garduño also wasn't able to host him again, and I was really uh, concentrating in Cacoito se Paris, and I think uh, I don't have you know that. Um, I were I I were I wasn't the correct person to to host him at that time, so mm -hmm. uh, we continue uh, being friends uh, with with Guru Roger, and I plan to to host him uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. He said that he will come, but at the end, mm -hmm. you know, everything stopped, and we yeah. we weren't able to to make that seminar. And well, we continue training like you have seen all every Saturday for the last three years. And he will come on November, November 26. He will be here in, in Mexico uh, after 10 years that he came for the first time. Right, right. So when, um, so, you know, just, you know, Lomeco is one of my favorite systems just because of the fact that when you look at the stick, heavily de Campo, and you look at the edge weapon, heavily Illustrissimo, with some Bikini Terja filling in the gaps. So, you know, so that's kind of a different, you know, methodology as far as Dose Perry. So, you know, how do you, um, what do you find as far as that, like far as the methodology? Is, do, are you finding complement to one another or are you finding some differences, but yet they're good differences? Yeah, there are so many differences. Uh, I think, I, I like Lameco knife. I think that, that the knife of Lameco- Out there. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. And I think that uh, Cacoito Separis lack, uh, has a lack in, 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 in the knife. So it's mostly, like you said, a, a stick. Uh, so Lamec la is really good in, in, in knife. So that's something that I really like. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's, if it's exactly Lameco or for me it's Lameco Astic, the way that Guru Roger uh, is teaching it, like, you know, uh, no telegraphic strikes, uh, mm -hmm. really have a good control in your long range. Uh, so it's really, really good the way that, that you have to, improve your your hearing patterns uh, all that stuff it's really really good but also at the end sooner or later you will get close to the other guy and maybe that's when you can mix cacoido separis and begin doing begin doing a uh, corto curvada so i think like i said it's uh, not only uh, at the end i know that i will mix both the styles and well i think it's it's really 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 good no i love i love lameco astic it's really amazing what what uh, yeah what yeah I, mean, I love it too i mean not as much as other streets mode, but it's like my second best and the whole thing with lameco you know when you look at the backyard group not not the people that were getting lameco through seminar format more in the public but when you look at the backyard group like uh felix 
uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, Roger, of course, Dino. Um, you know, David, you know, Ron Balicki and some of those other guys. The attribute development was so heavily, you know, just, you know, such heavy emphasis on that non-telegraphic striking, accuracy, power, speed, you know, position adjustment. I think it's one of the better systems that deals yeah. with that, um, just that attribute, attribute development side of the aspect of uh, training and that where it's not so much emphasis on the memory and all that. So that's what really attracted me about that system. Um, and the knife, I think it's one of the best out there for sure. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, depending on who you're getting it from, if it's has that backyard flavor, like David Roger, you know, it's really good stuff. Um, so what, um, okay. So what led you to that, the further dark side Piper? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think I have always been like uh, investigating, reading, mm. watching videos, uh, trying to to get more and more and more and more. And I know that one of the of the gaps that I have it's it's the knife. I I, I think that my knife has to to be better, and I have to improve a lot on that. Mm. So I don't know where or when I I saw about you know that. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, like that South, Afric, uh, South Africa knife system and that uh, system with all the things that we have know about the, gang, the gangs and that stuff. And I began reading about that and I said, okay, that would be nice to, 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 to have an approach to that stuff. But I didn't know how to, 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 to get uh, somebody to, 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 uh, that can teach it, uh, that can teach it to me. So once I, I saw that you that, that you put okay, I will give two or three classes to, to Piper and and I had the chance, thank you very much that you accept me to 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 take to do those, those classes and it was really nice. It was really amazing mm -hmm. the way that that Piper moves the, the, the knives, that the way that you move all the, the concepts. And I think something really nice is that it's not not um, no drills, you know, for me, uh, Filipino martial arts have so many knife drills, but I think that they are not real. Right now, they are they're, not real. They're not real. <laughs> no, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe yeah. 50 years ago, maybe they are. They were real. No, maybe, maybe 50 years ago, you can say, okay, I can block it and go to the wrist and disarm mm -hmm. and something like that. And, and I think it's it's a, a beautiful way uh, to 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 learn and teach knife, but it's not real. And uh, for me, Piper is really really a good style. It's real. It's uh, it's really direct. You go and do what you have to do. And no no fancy things. Mm. Just go and do. And I think that it's really good for um, self defense. And especially for for, for women, for uh, guys that that are not really big guys or, or or something like that. So I think that's why I I like uh, Piper. Uh, well, I, I want to continue training it with you. Uh, like you know, I had the chance to make my first exam yesterday. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you, and you did really it well. Would be so. training with you. I, and you know, something really important is that here there are guys that are connected right now that are really interested in training Piper with you and they will be certificated by, by instructors sooner or later. And I hope we someday, in the same way that we're trying to spread Cacoido Separes, Lameco in mm. Latin America, we will spread Piper uh, if you let us in, in those countries. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen just by virtue, well, beginning by virtue of you. Um, but yeah, much to your point, I think FMA back in the day before they got they wanted to kind of, I don't want to say, well, make it drill oriented for sake of money and what sells, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, that's kind of, unfortunately, some of it, which happened, you know, um, we just have to be honest. Uh, but there's nobody telling me back in the day, they weren't doing very direct stuff. You know what I mean? I just think over time, it got put packaged into drills and, that is yet to happen to Piper. Piper is so heavily tactic based. There are, there yeah. really is no drills like you mentioned. 
or you know emphasis on memorization is basically you get some tactics and you put them together like lego pieces and you find out what you like what resonates with you and kind of your your flavor so to speak depending on your size your your past your background your you know that's going to be an influence as well and yeah so that's what kind of resonated with me like you it just it, it was kind of refreshing to be honest with you you know what i mean um yeah so unfortunately as you know we're trying to kick to the curb the bad name it has and the reputation which is why we really profess as you mentioned the self-defense that i think it's fantastic for women I, I just do the reverse grip, the protecting hand, the bat. I, I just think for women, I just think it's a really, it could be a really good system for them, you know? You know, for example, right now I'm training paper with my daughter and she's nine years old and I hope she will never use it. Yeah, but I know course. that she will absorb it and she will really do it by herself and, and, and do it that part of herself and really she will develop it in a, in a really easy way because I think that Piper, it's, it's so natural. So that's, that make it easy to, 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 to learn. I know that it's not easy, but because there are natural moves at the end, it's easier to learn than that learn many drills. Yeah. You know what it is? You know what it is? I think there, it is easy and I think you're right now. You know what it is? I think it's difficult if you really try to adapt the African movement. You know, in other words, like you could take the tactics and Piper and really not embrace the African movement. I mean, you, and you could still get value out of the system. You, I mean, I, I know you can. I've seen it. But I think it's when you really try to really and, um, you know, as much as only possible, I guess. I think that's where potentially some of the difficulty can come in. And, you know, I have to be honest, too. And I mentioned this to you. You know, Piper is kind of for the athletic people. I mean, you got to be able to shift on a dime, elevation changes on the balls, yeah. your feet, spring. I mean, and that's not to say people who are not athletic, they can't get a value from it. I don't want to come across that way because that's that's not true. But it is a system, though, where you if you are athletic, you you are going to it is going to be easier and what have you to you know mm -hmm. really perform some of those movements really efficiently and effectively, you know? Um, yeah unfortunately but uh let me see here what um so all right so you, you you're you're training in it like what do you you kind of mentioned the value and all that um like what do you hope to go with it like what do you hope what are your goals within within piper my goals to the piper well i want to be an instructor i'm gonna be an instructor i'm sure of that <laughs> I, I'm going to be an instructor uh, and I want to continue training with you uh, be, because uh, I think that we make click together and, and, and I, I feel really comfortable training with you. I want to continue training training and, and try to go as high as I can. And uh, I also would like to, to, to spread it uh, to, to my students and my friends because they are my friends. No, no, they are not my students. My friends, they're in the other countries. And I hope we can we, we can spread Piper to to, to Latin America, uh, and well in a personal way, I hope uh, as I told you I can teach it to my daughter, and and she can she, she, she is, uh, well someday she she can be able to, to to have a good level using Piper. I don't know if she will be a teacher. I don't know if she will uh, continue training. I, I don't know what she will do. But living in Mexico right now, it's really dangerous, especially for, for women. So uh, if she had the chance to, to, to have a background of mm. Piper and, and using a knife, and you know, Piper, not, of course it's knife, but you can do it, like we said, like in a, with a dulo dulo, with a kubotan, mm. with some, some stuff like that. That's okay. and, yeah. yeah, and so if she knows and, and uh, interiorize the moves, she will be able to, to defend. So in a personal way, I would like that uh, to, that, that she can uh, reach that level to, to to defend herself. That's that's what I expect from from Piper. Oh, that's good. Yeah, especially if, um, yeah, for your daughter's sake and all that. Yeah, uh, and who knows? Maybe she'll even spread it to you know other females. You know. Um, yeah. I'm in the process of developing. Um, 
like I, so one of the things I do for Lloyd is I kind of develop stuff. Uh, the, well, the Piper stick. One of the things I'm developing um, is taking Piper um, beyond the, so in other words, if you're on the ground, like, you know, stuff you could do from guard, stuff you can do where you're posting ahead, you know, and you, got, you know what I mean? You know, from yeah. here, it, I think it's going to fit nicely into pushing off on the head to get back to your feet, you know, from guard, you know what I mean? You have an overhook, you have an underhook, you know? So that's kind of st- stuff I'm working on now. I, I think there's something there, you know, I just got to, it's just like a thousand, you know, thousands of things going on here, you know, but, um, but I got it up here. I just haven't put it on paper yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, what, um, okay. So what do you, um, if you could train, like if you had the time or the, the will, like if you could do another FMA system and you, of your choice, what do you think you would choose? Uh, I don't know. I think Illustrissimo. Everybody says that. And I think, Everybody. And I think <laughs> Pequiti. I think Pequiti, Tirsi, and Ill- well, Illustrissimo and Pequiti. I don't say Lameco because I'm training that right now, mm. but I think that, that it will be Illustrissimo. Everybody says yeah. that. Well, most of the answers that come back is Illustrissimo. That, that's so funny. Yeah. That's why I've been now. That's why I'm making a point now more and more to ask this question. Because I'm trying to keep, so why? Okay. So why chaotic? Like, what is the? Uh, what do you see from afar? Because I think it's really offensive. Because I I think it's really direct. Because I think uh, the way the, the strikes and well, it's uh, it's not it's not only uh, uh, it's mostly. Uh, uh, bolo sword uh, style instead of of uh, of a stick, uh, so I, I think it's really um, I don't know if it's the correct way to say, but it's really aggressive, really direct, and I I think it's a a fighting style, a really fighting style. So that's what I like. Uh, you know, I, I like competing. I, I like being in a, in a being in a, in a tournament. I, I really like it, but I think that Illustrissimo goes forward and it's not for for a tournament it's really for life that's what i would like to, to yeah learn. yeah definitely on that yeah definitely sword based i mean he just you know there wasn't even the system i yeah. mean he was just going out there using it you know from his family to whether it was on the docks or he was a guerrilla fire in world war ii taking japanese heads off um and then when they finally got him out of the house it became a system but it was a more or less a collection of tactics and moves he did you know what i mean but yeah definitely sim- simply direct directly simple um it's definitely a way you can kind of sum up ki yeah i think you, i think you would enjoy it you know because you're i mean you're seeing it in the lameco i mean there's huge yeah of ki in lameco um yeah it's one of those arts you can refine and it's it you know sword based um yeah not really tournament much to your point you know it's kind of you know really for <laughs> you know over there you know when swords were definitely in play you know self-defense yeah um but that's funny ki all right another one for ki <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, you should make a statistic and and at the end sooner one day say okay this portion of, of, of I, ha- I kind of been doing that and right now I'm I think I'm pretty accurate in this I mean I I do ask this a lot and I would have to say it's at least in the teens as far as KI couple yeah. um couple PTK definitely there um yeah there was a few a few on that Compo came up a few times, um, okay. but it is absolutely predominantly been KI for sure. Yeah, um, that's great. But uh, okay, so what do you? All right, future goals for your organization and self. Well, future goals: continue training hand to hand with with my mentors, with Grandmaster Chuck Cañete, mm-hmm. Grandmaster Anthony Kleeman. Grandmaster Ron Liu, uh, I have to improve a lot, and I know that they are the guys that will uh, will give me that chance to improve in Kakoido Separis. And 
train a lot, train a lot with Guru Roger. Yeah. I know that he's the guy that, that I have to, to train a lot with him. And well, also the other styles that I'm training right now and I want to develop and I want to improve it's Piper with you and uh, Irish stick double steel with uh, Master Bernie. Okay. And that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I have tried to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu so many times, but I'm old and I'm really bad in the ground. So no, I will <laughs> I will continue just doing that for, for, for martial arts. That, that's a lot. Kakoido Separis, Lameco, Piper, and Irish Stick. That is a lot, yeah. Yeah, and so sooner or later I will become an instructor in, in these four, four yeah. styles. And well, uh, I want to continue training and spreading to Latin America. Mm. Uh, right now, there are Argentina, Colombia, Costa Rica, Peru, uh, Guatemala, Dominican Republic that we are training together. There are six countries, well, with Mexico, seven oh, countries. Oh, wow. okay. And I hope that uh, more guys will join with us. We are open to train. You, you know, for example, uh, we haven't charged any money for the guys of, the, of those countries that are training with us. And that's really nice because uh, that shows that we are training just because we love Yeah, I know. Right? That is nice. You're just doing it for the love of the art and all that. No, no, no. That's... Uh... Wow. Um, no, that's that's great. Yeah, as far as the ground, I know I used to do a lot. I still do ground for maintenance. But I tell you, most of my injuries came from MMA. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The oh. takedowns, boom. Then you're recovering on the ground. Then you're trying to pull guard yeah. your knee. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it, it for sure. But uh, so we, you know, it's funny. Irish stick is kind of like the new, I, I, when I, you know, it's funny. When I look at the martial arts culture on social media, it oh you always see the hot ticket, you know, the new what's the new flavor, you know, and it changes like a year, two years. And I think the current hot flavors is, is Piper and Irish stick. You know, I'm saying oh. that. You know what I mean? Um so what do you uh what do you so from your don't say Paris to Irish stick, what do you I mean what do you see as far as the difference in methodologies and all that? Both being stick systems. Uh, well, you know, I, I began training double style because there are a part in in Kodos Paris and I think in, in all uh, Filipino martial arts that you grab the stick with both with both hands and and, and use use trying to, to to do it with with both hands, like you know, like a handball or something like that. So uh, I have a, a, a few few training with with two hands in the stick. Mm -hmm. And I began uh, watching videos to, to improve on that on that stuff, and also to use the the siva the the the, oh, the spear the staff the spear yeah staff yeah. and suddenly I reach uh, Irish stick, and I began watching them, and once I think you know John Porter. Uh, John John Porter I don't know uh, how Porter, many yeah, yeah. I don't know how many styles he he's he teach and, and train. And once he told me, Hey Lalo, are you interested in training double style? And I said, uh, well, yeah, I would like to to to, to train uh, Irish stick. And well, he said, Okay, let me talk with my with my teacher. And that's the way that I get with, with Bernie. Yeah. And the same that we did with you. Uh, we had a seminar with all the guys from, from Latin America. And it was really an amazing uh, seminar. Uh, well, I, I really like it. The methodology is diff it's different, very different from, from, from Filipino martial arts, the way they hit, the mm -hmm. patterns. The, there are so many things that are different. But at the same time, uh, I think it has been not easy, but, uh, you know, you have that uh, muscle memory that makes you do the, the moves easier than if you were just a complete beginner in, in, in a stick fight. So yeah. it's it's really nice. I like it. I like it. And I want to continue. Yeah, it's interesting. Training. You know, if I didn't have so much stuff going on, I'm just so reluctant to go do something else. 
and just not be able to dedicate the time and then them having to drop it like that's the worst you know what i mean so i just kind of yeah. i look from afar but yeah i mean i definitely played around with it and all that i mean it's interesting you know and they jump the stick the jab the air i mean and um you know the crescent blocks i mean it's definitely interesting yeah for sure um you know, but yeah, I, I just I wonder because I know you've been doing it, and so I just I wanted to know what you thought of it. So as far as your lessons, are are they pretty? They're pretty much they're with Bernie, correct? Yeah. Yeah. With Bernie, I have been I'm training with Bernie every two weeks. Yeah. And well, we're we're training together. He he gave me the chance to train with him, and I think it's really nice, really nice training training. Yeah, he's so he's stuff. so nice. He is. Yeah, of I mean, course. He's yeah, a really Bernie is just really like. Cool you can't get yeah. along bernie i mean there's something wrong you know what i mean bernie is just so yeah he's really nice guy yeah he's got the irish you know what i mean like when we meet with piper it's 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 pretty funny um and, and you know the names the names of the of the techniques is really yeah. funny bosnia and hill uh, it's not like you know they're like really yeah. i don't know how to say it really Funny the, the names that they use to to, to name the, the 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 techniques. Yeah, some of the really... tactics. What I found interesting when when we I did a joint seminar with him. Yeah, I know. an hour each. What I found most interesting was the history, the way he yeah. was talking about the whiskey distilleries, kind of fighting them. I I thought that was like the most interesting thing, like to me, like you know, uh, like they were yeah. fighting for you know what I mean. Then they meet in the field and they're. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. I, I thought that was pretty. That, I thought that was pretty interesting. But uh, well, this has been great, man. Um, I'm so glad we finally got to do this. You know. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Neil. Yeah, so no, you, you, you. It was so funny. You were so nervous in the beginning, and you did fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Could, you me, yeah really, Could you send me the question? Could you send? Me? You know, because I know my English is is really bad. I, I know that my my English is not good. Uh, today You're I was perfect. talking with my wife and said, "Okay, I'm really nervous because I, I know that I will have a mistake using no, the verbs." No, you did perfect on here. Times, present, past, future, but well. Here we are, and I really enjoyed uh, talking with no, you. you did perfect. You, know, really. you did so well on here, and you know that's why it's like I would have, if you really wanted the questions, I would have sent them. But then I'm thinking like, you know what? I'm gonna give him a little more time, and he's gonna be fine. <laughs> he's not gonna yeah. need the questions. I'm just gonna keep stalling him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And it was really nice. It was really funny being yeah. here with you, and I really, I really enjoyed. This yeah, because I was like, you. yeah, I'm like, there's no, he's going to do fine. I'm not going to put him in a torture chamber. I'm not going to ask him quick questions <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah so what I'm going to do it. is um, I, I download on YouTube. So what I'll do is I'll share the, the actual YouTube download to your messenger. And then from there, you can, um, you know, you can share whatever you want to. But this uh, this was a really good one. Almost twenty people liked it. The comments on that. So you did you really really well. So if you, hey, if you think about it, um, when you get a chance, because I definitely want to get more people interviewed down by your way. You know, uh, Mexico and, and definitely some of the other countries. Um, if you think about, it, can you give me some you know, like, you know, the, more the notable names on there, as far as instructors, whatever, it, you know, whatever style, you know, whatever style, it doesn't matter. I don't care about that, you know, um, and there. I, I think, I think a, a really good option is that, that we can, we, we can talk with, with Jerry Rechea. He's really nice. And um, well, of course, if, if you like, if you want, if, and if you give us a chance, it would be great if we can have a interview with the other guy, with the guys of the other countries, you know, Victor, Saul, uh, Luis Serna, uh, all the I guys. Get from those the one team. together. That'd be good. getting Saul, getting Saul and uh, Victor, and and maybe uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the big problem that in, in that is that you know I have to be translating. But if you have the the, the if, if you have patient that we can do it, and oh, it I'm, will be I'm, really I'm, really I'm, nice. I'm so patient. Yeah, that that'd be the least. Yeah, I could bring you on with them, and you could just translate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. That will be that will will be really nice, and I know they will love to to be here with you. Yeah, I definitely want to get more people from there. I really do. Um, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, talk to them. Give me some names. Who who you think would like would be good guest? And, and definitely, um, we can. We'll definitely do it. Yeah, I'm, I'll definitely be interested in doing that. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, 
All right. Um, in the Florida State. Uh, yeah, Blunt to Yep, yep. Um, all right. All right. Uh, that's why it was a pleasure. So, um, yeah, well, it sounds like we're going to be uh, just meeting for a bit on Tuesday, anyhow. So. Okay. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Okay. All right. You well, take care. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dean. Thank you, everybody that joined to this. Yeah, to really enjoy it. All right. See you soon. See you Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. See you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, there, episode 321. Who is next? Who is next? Um, I have the sheet right here. Uh, Bert and Richardson, coming Thursday, my teacher. And I can't wait. I've been out of here, and it's been a while. So I'm really looking forward to having Burton back on. Um, who else? Part two, Monday, I believe Tom is doing Sheer again. Yeah, I believe so. I think that's Monday. Um, but yeah, check out Burton. Uh, it's going to be third. It's going to be Thursday at uh, five o'clock Eastern time. Cause he's in Hawaii six hours back. So I had to kind of do it a little earlier. Um, but Burton's going to, yeah, he's going to light it up. So, yeah, if you can, check that out. And then, I guess, yeah, Tom's got one tomorrow. I'm not sure what time, though. I'm sure he's got the flyer out there, whatever. But, uh, all right, folks, thank you, and I'll see you next time.